Welcome everyone to Movie Analysis Writing About Stills. This is a still. It's a single frame from a movie. It's much like a painting or a photograph, which we've been studying. And of course, it's the building block for a movie. So what we've learned in writing about photographs and paintings will help us in writing about films because we're taking it from the beginning. We're taking it from the still. What movie is this still from? It's from Fight Club 1999. And what do you notice in this single still? It's as if we've paused the video. So if this were like what we did when we were introduced to photography and paintings, we would take a minute to sort of inventory what's on the screen. Um, you can pause to do that if you'd like, or you can continue to roll on. We'll get into that particular still in a moment, but I wanted to pause and go over really what's uh, left in this particular unit anyway. Um, and we'll talk about stills and how they build to an entire movie here. So a still is a single photograph within a video. A shot is a single uninterrupted part of a video. It's when you take your smartphone and hit that big red button on the uh, camera app in video mode in your iPhone. Um, when you hit that red button, a shot begins and it ends when you hit that red button again. Um, so a shot is what a movie camera makes. Um, or you could say a shot is what your phone's camera app in video mode makes. Um, it creates shots. From there, we build scenes. A scene, rather, is a single sequence of continuous action. It's defined by time and place or by setting rather than by technology. You can see the difference between um, the way it's defined relative to how a still and a shot are defined. A still is defined by, you know, basically a snapshot. A shot is defined by what you're doing with your uh, camera, um, but not so a scene. It's more of a literary term, time and place, setting. Um, and instead of a camera, you make a scene, you would use a camera uh, or um, the camera app in your phone to create a shot but you would use movie editing software such as iMovie or WeVideo um, to create a scene because movie editing software is what you use to join shots together using transitions and in doing so um, such software combines shots to make scenes so you have a lot of stills and it takes a lot of stills to make a shot and then uh, you have a lot of shots that your camera makes and in your video editing software you take those shots and create a scene and still with that software you take a lot of scenes and you make a movie of course and we're not going to go over all of the terminology for each of these stages in film development right here we'll do that a little bit later in a subsequent assignment when we build a glossary of um, film terms, but we'll go over a few just for purposes of getting our feet wet and enough to build our um, uh, ekphrasis here to know where we're going. Um, language for writing about stills, all of the ekphrasis phrasing that we've had before, um, such as setting, uh, excuse me, not setting, such as composition and color and texture and things like that. Um, but we're adding to that some terminology concerning shots. Is it a long shot? Is it taken from far away? These long shots um, often create establishing shots where we understand the setting. We get the um, the location down because of uh, an establishing shot that lets us know we're at a new scene. Is it a close-up? Is it a medium shot? 
sort of at a conversational type level with our subject. Um, how's the focus? Is it soft focus? So it's not entirely in focus. Is it deep focus where everything in the foreground and background are in focus? That is a cinematic development from the early 1940s. And how about the camera angle? Are we looking at our subject from below? If so, it's a low angle shot. Are we looking from above? Then it's a high angle shot. Or is it eye level, which it typically is? Um, or is it Dutch angle, where we're looking at it at an angle, at a, a sort of um, not quite vertical or horizontal, but uh, at an obtuse angle? Um, at a slant, we say. How about the lighting? Is it low key? low level lighting is it high key lighting it's sort of overexposed if you will or at least bright if not overexposed or is the lighting kind of neutral is it coming from the side from the front the rear these different lighting angles um, create different effects particularly with mood and characterization as we'll see um, when we move to writing about shots we take in some other information we continue to use our ekphrastic phraseology along with these other um, aspects of writing about stills and we add to that uh, things about rack focus which takes a shot because you're moving from a character's eyes to what he's looking at back to the character's face to see his thinking his uh, reaction to what we and he see um, how about the sound? Um, now that we're moving from just a still, we th can think about and write about sound. Is it diegetic? Diegetic are natural sounds. So if the shot is of a bird, we're not surprised to hear bird song. That would be diegetic, it's natural. Non-diegetic is not natural to the situation. If we were watching that bird and heard piano music, um, and there's no piano around that doesn't surprise us we're used to movies but uh, it would surprise us out in the wild looking at a bird to hear a piano coming from nowhere um, but of course that music is there often to uh, create mood to reinforce a particular plot or theme uh, how about camera movement we don't have that in a still but we do with a shot we can um, the camera might move in ways that are called uh, tracking panning tilting zooming or a dolly, and we'll get into what each of those terms mean later as well. Um, when we move from shots to scenes, we include all of our ekphrastic phrasing, we use all of our still writing, we use all of our shot writing, and then we start to include um, editing techniques, like what particular kind of cut and transition takes us from shot to shot. Um, and then we can also use our narrative and literary terms, which we'll be getting into a little bit more again when we write about entire movies and scenes within movies. So that's an overview of what we'll be learning about um, stills, shots, and scenes. So back to our um, still from Fight Club. The most important um, cinematic term that we'll learn in this unit is mise en scène, a French term obviously, it's there in red. And in a movie, the mise en scène includes composition, which we've learned is the artistic arrangement of things in a painting or photograph. How are people and uh, things in a, a painting, photograph, or a still now, arranged relative to one another. Um, but the mise-en-scene is more than just uh, composition. It, uh, it also includes all of the elements placed in front of the camera to be filmed, um, more than just the things there. Uh, it includes the setting, the prompts, the, the props rather, the lighting, costumes, makeup, and figure behavior meaning the actors, uh, their gestures, and their facial expressions. All of those things are part of the mise-en-scene. And so now look at this uh, and uh, what elements of the mise-en-scene can you make out in this one still? And um, you can also, we'll throw in some camera angle technology as well. This is a close-up, a long shot, medium shot. 
Um, is it low angle, high angle, or eye level shot? So if you'd care to, um, pause the video and take an inventory, make notes in your uh, journal about what you see. Bullets are fine. Okay. Now um, I'm going to show you what I see or what the author of the book that I took this from saw a uh, close up eye level man about 30 years old blandly handsome is this author's term for this little you see as a description and commentary we're getting mostly description but a little commentary slips in there um, dark hair top of gray suit jacket white collar of dress shirt man is centered on the screen and that's true both vertically and horizontally top part of head is cut out of the image we are looking at an airplane interior that is our um, our place in our setting there is a blue seat with a white headrest or gray the man is in focus <clears throat> excuse me the background is out of focus there are blue curtains center left of image in the background there are bright curved windows on the right in the background um, aspect ratio wide rectangle uh, aspect ratio is a is film terminology also uh, photography terminology but it has to do with um, you know how how what are the dimensions of the uh, projection onto a screen? And then there's a man in the row behind, out of focus, no other people. There's light on the foreground, on the forehead rather, and light on the nose of the man in the close up. His eyes are in the shadow. There are dark circles under his eyes. He is staring straight ahead. Ed Sickoff, the author of Film Studies and Introduction, which I've used to um, create this assignment, took that information about this still and wrote this paragraph about it. I've highlighted terms that he used that are from film, just to show you how when you write about film, including writing about a still, there are some words that you'll be using from a glossary we'll put together later um, that come in very handy to describe what's going on so I'll read this out loud here this image the image is a close-up of a blandly handsome man who appears to be about 30 years old so you see some of the echoes interjecting here um, of the bullets that um, I wrote down from his observations of that still in creating this paragraph this, by the way, is like a, an ekphrasis. Um, we'll compare it to an ekphrasis uh, a bit later here. I'll pick up with a second sentence. He has dark hair with a conservative businessman type haircut. We can see the shoulders of his gray conservative suit jacket and the white collar of his dress shirt. The man is centered on the screen. The very top part of his head is cut out by the frame. The image shows the interior of an airplane. The man is seated on a blue seat with his face framed by a white strip of material that serves as a headrest. The man is in crisp focus, but the background is out of focus. Still, we can clearly see some blue curtains in the center left of the image with some bright curved airplane windows on the far right in the background. The curtains match the blue of the seat. The windows, appearing white, match the headrest. There is another man in the image. He is seated in the row behind the man in the close-up, in close-up, but he is the only other person in the image. The man in close-up has a bright light shining on his forehead and nose, but his eyes are notably in shadow, although we can clearly see dark circles under his eyes, suggesting tiredness or lack of sleep. The man is staring straight ahead. Now, notice that this ekphrasis 
isn't quite as literary as our previous ones. It doesn't sort of celebrate the uh, painting or photograph the way we've been writing in the past, but it does have, of course, a great deal of the descriptive elements. It has that first person plural we that we've come to uh, get from Mark Strand's ekphrasis of Edward Hopper's painting. Um, there is some commentary that sort of slips in here and there, and that's cool. Um, it's grounded in description. Blandly handsome, handsome conservative haircut uh, jumped out to me. The fo this focus on description makes for a stronger film analysis paper later. So we'll see how this uh, helps us a bit later when we expand um, toward writing an entire film analysis paper on a movie of your choice, by the way. Um, and just some thoughts here, backing up, getting a little more philosophical now that we've gone through this exercise. Can you study film? Is that, does that seem odd? We usually watch film to check out, to relax, you know, to explore um, themes, um, you know, particularly documentary films. Um, but w how about studying film? Of course, you probably know that in college, uh, film studies are popular. Those classes that uh, cover film studies are quite popular. And you can even major in uh, cinematography. Film studies are a part of the foundation for that. How would studying film as an art form differ from writing about paintings or photographs, do you think? Food for thought. Um, now I'm going to show you, and here I am showing you, a another still. Um, this one taken from Citizen Kane, a 1942 film by Orson Welles, directing and acting in it. He's the star. He is Kane, uh, Citizen Kane. We see his back toward us here in the foreground, Orson Welles. Um, and without getting into the movie itself, um, try your hand at writing an ekphrasis of this still, or of any other still that you'd care to write about in any movie. Um, no fair using that still in, in Fight Club, um, but you can certainly use this one. This is individual work, and it is practice, and it is 80 words or more, and consider these elements that we've learned uh, to be in a mise-en-scene, mise-en-scene, the composition, which we've been learning, of course, is the artistic arrangement of things in, in this case, a still. Consider the setting, the props, the lighting, the costumes, makeup, figure behavior, meaning the actors, their gestures, their facial expressions, which way their heads are turned, um, how many people are there, how are they arranged, what's going on. Um, Consider, too, um, what kind of a shot is this? Is it a close-up? Is it a long shot? Consider the cam camera angle. Is it a low-angle shot? That means taken from below. Um, is it a high-angle shot uh, taken from above? Or is it an eye-level shot directly uh, in this, at the same level as the eyes of uh, the subject of the still? Uh, by the way, uh, just a little piece of information we'll look at a little bit later. A low angle shot usually suggests um, uh, the subject of that low angle shot are powerful. That is, uh, when we're looking from below at a person, um, that person is often being portrayed as powerful relative to whoever is um, at that angle that the camera is taking the picture from. High angle is the opposite. Um, when there's a high angle shot, the subject of the shot uh, below the camera is often seen as less powerful, um, sometimes drastically less powerful. So anyway, write about this still or about any still that you'd care to. If you write about another still though, um, please write um, the name of the movie and the year 
of the that the movie was released. When you write your ekphrasis, make sure to use as a model the ekphrasis that we just went over from this still from Fight Club. Thank you very much. This concludes this video on movie analysis writing about stills.